In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a character in Cartoon Animator 5 so that you can use motion capture to create a live performance with OBS Studio. Hi, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist and sometimes known as the Lazy Animator. And in this video, I wanted to demonstrate the Motion Live plugin for Cartoon Animator 5. And to do that, I thought I'd set up a character in Cartoon Animator 5 that you could puppet and give a live performance to using OBS Studio. The reason why you may want to do this is if you're doing live streams, obviously, and you'd like to, instead of having yourself on screen, you could do a live cartoon character that could respond to people. Or alternatively, if you're like me and you use OBS to create your vlogs and stuff, uh, you can do a live performance but record it to your hard drive and then you can talk to camera for as long as you want with your character without being restricted by the length of the timeline that Cartoon Animator itself has. The main purpose here is really to show you just how easy it all is to set up once you have the Motion Live plugin. So I'm going to get started and here we go. I've got Cartoon Animator all set up with a brand new project ready to go. And my goal really is to set up the exact same scenario, scenario you've just been watching of me talking to camera. But I'm going to set myself up as a cartoon character. So to get started I'm going to my custom folder and I'm going to go get one of my own avatars. I'll just do a search and we're going to narrow that down into the actor character category. This is one of the real benefits of the new smart manager and these are all my avatars but I want to use a particular one. This one here, bring that onto the stage. Uh, this is my Tet avatar that I added spring bone hair to so that I'll, uh, when we do the motion capture on this we'll get that springy hair secondary sort of animation happening. So I've got that and the next thing I want to do is just change the pose to something a little less A-frame. I'm going to go to animation. I'm just going to do this standing pose here straight away just to put the arms down. That's all I need to do. Make sure the timeline's back at the start by hitting the stop button down there. And the next thing I'm going to do is frame this up, or frame the camera, so that this is showing pretty much about the same as what you would see in my usual vlogs. And the reason why I'm doing this kind of uh, framing is that the Motion Live plugin that I have only animates the head and the shoulder movements so it's generally ideal for this kind of situation where it's just a talking head speaking to the camera and you don't need to see the character's arms. I'd say that's roughly similar framing to what I use with my character and the next thing I'm going to do is set up my background which I have over here. I'm just going to drag in the background that I normally use for my videos. Do it as a prop, static image. And you could, if you wanted to, just do a green screen here and uh, use OBS to put any background behind the character that you want. But since I already do a green screen for my backgrounds anyway, and this background obviously is way too big, so I'm going to reduce it down to size. But as I was saying, is since I use a green screen in OBS anyway, it makes sense just to bring in that same graphic that I use for my green screen directly into cartoon animator like this. So do that down a bit and then I'm going to move it back a bit just to make sure it's well behind the position of my character. So that's roughly the framing that I use. So that's that all set up. Right, the next thing I need to do is close out the content manager and scene manager. So we don't need them anymore and we want this uh, area here that we're going to be recording to be as large as possible. We need to set up our plugins. So what I'm going to do is start up the face tracker first and in order for this to work I'm going to have to shut down the webcam in the corner here because I can't have two webcams going at the same time and we'll change the face tracker to go with my webcam. 
And there we go. And I'm going to make sure this is always on top. And I usually leave the resolution on 640 by 480 and 30 frames per second. And pretty much all of that is fine. I'm going to just resize the window to a smaller size so it doesn't quite take up as much real estate. And I'll put this up on that side so that when we open up the plugin, Motion Live plugin here, we can put that over here on the other side. So this is what it looks like before you've set anything up. So all we've got to do is select a character, like so. And then we've got to activate, well, first we're going to turn these two on, the facial gear and the face 3D for body, and then we activate face 3D and the body face 3D for body. And the first thing that you need to do is set up your zero poses so that um, you've got the like neutral pose of you just sitting, looking at the camera with your eyes looking at the lens. And we've got to do that for both the body and the face. So I hit the preview and you'll see that it's got this really weird grumpy looking expression. So I just got to make sure I'm looking at the camera. And we're set on the body. So we just hit zero pose for the body. And we move to the face. Look at the camera. You can see the face sort of snapped into view there. So now we're kind of ready to go. Stop previewing. But anyway, that's the um, character set up in Cartoon Animator 5. The next thing we have to do is set everything up in OBS. Uh, I'm not sure how well the lip syncing is going to be on here, uh, but we'll see how we go. Might be able to do some adjustments. These settings just sort of show you how much um, the webcam is capturing the various mouth movements and stuff. Uh, I think if we go mouth, we can see all the mouth movements there. Mostly the smile one that seems to be coming up a lot. Not sure why that is. Make it a bit more sensitive, maybe that will help. Let's see what happens. Do more of the mouth. In here, we'll just preview that. Does that help the mouth anymore? Hard to tell. Anyway, the next thing we need to do is set up OBS so that we can record this window and what's happening. Uh, when we're doing our performance. So let's get on to that. So the next step is to go into OBS Studio and set this up. And you'll have to excuse me from looking over to the left or whatever it is, or your right perhaps, uh, because I'm looking at my second screen to record OBS Studio. I will maximize this. And this is what OBS can see at the moment, but what I want OBS to see is just this screen here or my character and its window and not all this other stuff. So to set this up, we need to set up a new display. And I'm going to do CA5, CA5 live stream. OK to that. And this is the new uh, area. OBS can now see. You'll see it's in the window in the corner here and we'll set up an audio source for it. I'm just going to use an existing one. Okay and now we need to set up a video source which is going to be a window capture. We'll create a new window capture. Okay and we're going to select the application which is Cartoon Animator and you'll see now that's just the application with uh, none of the motion live stuff showing around it, just that window. Uh, I can close this down now. 
Uh, what I need to do is crop all of the applications area out so that we can just see the character. To do that, I just need to click on this image, hit the Alt key and move these nodes to crop out the edges. I'm going to line it up with the camera box in Cartoon Animator. That's about it. Same over this side, camera box, and up the top, and down the bottom. I'm going to move the whole thing, just click and drag, click and drag the corner until it fills the whole screen. There we go. So now, uh, when I select preview, you should be able to see, here we go, I'll do preview and press the space key. There you go, I now have my character in OBS. And the lip sync isn't working too well. Uh, I don't really know why that is. Uh, I've tried all sorts of different settings. It could just be uh, my machine's not up to the task of lip syncing and having OBS going and uh, using another application to screen record OBS because. Uh, I couldn't actually record with OBS uh, while I was demonstrating how to use OBS. So uh, I wouldn't take my computer's lip syncing performance as a good example of what can be achieved. Uh, my computer isn't the most powerful of machines out there. It's only an uh, i5 core processor uh, when uh, probably could do with an i7 or better. As you can see, uh, the character is working live in OBS. All the spring bones in the hair is happening. Uh, getting my eye blinks, I think. I've got my glasses on, which is probably not helping them too much. But yeah, you can get sort of better lip sync. You could do this and just talk to the camera as a cartoon character and record it straight to your hard drive as much as you want and not be limited by cartoon animator's timeline. I think if I was not doing a live performance and I was just recording to go into a video, I probably wouldn't use this method at all. Regardless, that's how you set up Cartoon Animator to work with OBS so that you can uh, use your cartoon avatars and characters for live performance using the Motion Live plugin. So I'll we'll just get out of that and back into Cartoon Animator. So there you go, I hope you found this demonstration informative. I wouldn't take the performance of my own computer with exactly how good or bad the Motion Live face capture is. Uh, a lot of things could be slowing my machine down. It's not a particularly powerful machine as it is. And I have had better lip sync than this, but I think uh, if I was going to do this uh, for a vlog rather than a live performance, I wouldn't do do it this way. I'd probably just record straight into Cartoon Animator and then do the lip sync and whatever the way you would normally do it for a character. Uh, yeah, if you ever want to try doing a live performance and get a bit better mouth capture than what I'm getting here, uh, definitely give this a try and I hope I've sort of demonstrated enough how you would set it up through OBS so that you can do an unlimited live performance and not be sort of locked into whatever length of time you have with Cartoon Animator's timeline. So I'm going to leave it there. Until the next video, uh, bye for now.